You can't get very far in logic without learning something about propositional logic. In this video, I'm going to say a few things about what propositional logic is and why the basic concepts of propositional logic are so important for logical thinking and argument analysis. Propositional logic is sometimes called sentential logic or statement logic. We saw in the basic concepts in logic and argumentation course that an argument is a set of claims, and the term claim is synonymous with the terms proposition or statement or assertion. A claim or proposition is a bit of language that has the following defining feature. It's the sort of thing that can be true or false. So propositional logic deals with logical relationships between propositions. But more importantly, it deals with logical relationships between propositions taken as wholes. And by this, we mean that in propositional logic, the fundamental unit of analysis is the whole proposition, the thing that can be true or false. We're not interested in the parts of speech that make up the proposition, like subject terms and predicate terms. In John is wearing a red coat, for example, John is the subject term and is wearing a red coat is the predicate. But the subject term John by itself is neither true nor false. And neither is the predicate phrase, is wearing a red coat. So only when you put them together do you get a whole proposition that can be true or false. So in propositional logic, all we care about is the truth value of a given proposition, whether it's true or false. This is why in propositional logic, we use single letters to symbolize a proposition. So we might symbolize this proposition with a single letter J, which will stand for the whole proposition. John is wearing a red coat. Once you've done this, then you can ask how the truth value of this proposition relates to the truth value of other propositions. Or you can ask how the truth value of a compound claim relates to the truth value of the individual component claims that make it up. Here's an example. John is wearing a red coat and he's stolen a Jeep. This is an example of a compound claim or a compound proposition. It's composed of two claims. John is wearing a red coat and John has stolen a Jeep. Each of these component claims is a proposition that can be true or false. We can ask, is John wearing a red coat? If he is, it's true. If he's not, it's false. Similarly for whether John has stolen a Jeep. Now, from the standpoint of propositional logic, what's really interesting about this example is that the compound claim as a whole is also a proposition that can be true or false. In this case, it turns out that the compound claim as a whole is true just in case both of the component claims turn out to be true. If either one is false, then the compound claim as a whole will be false. So if it turns out that John has stolen a Jeep, but he's actually wearing a blue coat, then the compound claim circled in green is false. This is an illustration of the general point being made in point number three above here, that propositional logic is concerned with the way that the truth value of compound claims is a function of the truth value of the individual component claims. In propositional logic, you construct compound claims out of a small number of basic logical connectives. These are the basic types. You form conjunctions using and, you form disjunctions using or, you form conditionals using if then, and you form contradictories using not. Once you know the rules for how the truth value of these compound claims is a function of the truth values of the component claims, then you can evaluate the truth value of more complex claims like this. If A or B is true, then C is true, and D is not true. Given the truth values of all of the component claims, you can work out the truth value of the compound claim. This is the kind of exercise you might do in a formal logic course, but it's really not what we're going to focus on in this course. We're going to focus on understanding the basic logical concepts that are derived from propositional logic. In part one, we're going to look at the definitions of the basic compound claims. What is a conjunction? What is a disjunction? What is a conditional? In part two, we'll look at the definition of the contradictory of a claim. And use this to define a set of related logical concepts, contradiction and consistency. These are very important concepts in logic and argument analysis. In part three, look at how to write and interpret the contradictories of the basic compound claims, not A and B, not A or B, and not if A then B. And finally, in part four, we'll look at some different ways of writing and expressing conditionals and conditional relationships in ordinary language. There are a couple of reasons for spending extra time on this particular topic. 
The first is that conditional claims are used all the time in everyday argumentative contexts, but they can be expressed in all sorts of different ways. And it's sometimes hard to know how to evaluate arguments that employ them. Second, for those practicing for the LSAT test, if there's one bit of logic that the LSAT requires you to understand above all others, it's the logic of conditional claims and conditional arguments. If you don't understand how to interpret language that expresses conditional relationships, or you can't distinguish between valid and invalid argument forms that use conditionals, then your chances of doing well on the LSAT are slim at best. I've got a separate tutorial course that focuses on valid and invalid argument forms that use the conditional. In this course, we're going to focus mainly on the logic of conditional claims and how to interpret conditional language.